Hey, this is Veronica Setsky, and you're watching Tax Day Live. business to the next level. We have just expanded the amount of resources that you as partners have through Pax8. Real security is about how you manage the losses, how you take the punches, how well you detect, how well you respond. This is where we'll be bringing you content that you want to see every week to help you grow your business. And I think the real winners here are, are the managed service providers. Who is this? I'm um, Chief Cuteness Officer. My advice is know what you're selling and know whether it's making you money. I ended up living in Korea for four years. I and was wondering so when I traveled... we were going to talk about the elephant in the room. But I'm bummed. Thanks, Dad. Let's talk about risk assessment. So there's all kinds of ways to respond to risk. Man, it's great to see you, Dom. If you're really interested in just nerdy bits of home security, definitely those resources. That was Ooh. a huge thunder. finding ways that we're helping partners, finding either you know balance in their life or focus or purpose. Practices that are gonna help improve your project management skills or your finances. We're here to talk about setting long-term goals and then how to achieve them. Increasing your quality, therefore becoming the best place in town to work. Welcome to Academy Live. Welcome to Academy Live. Rex, Chris, and I are all back in the show today, so we're happy to be here. Uh, today, we're going to talk to Sky Kurz. She is an energetic, visionary leader with a passion for marketing, tech, and community building. While at PAX 8, Sky has been leading the go-to-market strategy, global campaigns, and educational introductions. Her past campaigns include Academy Coaching, you might have gotten that um, uh, secret sauce in the mail at some point. That was all Sky's idea. Um, Academy go to market so that everyone knows what it is. Professional services go to market so you all know what it is. There's a customer segment growth and nonprofit. She's currently leading the onboarding nurture. So for partners who join Pax8, what's their first introduction to our company? Being a partner. And whilst she's also supporting Academy through the creation of partner-facing marketing strategy course, which we're going to talk about later, and peer group facilitation. So we're going to talk about all of these areas and so much more. But first, I want to share some good news. So I think we have a graphic coming up here, but I just wanted to be extremely thankful to the Channel Pro readers out there that voted for PAX 8. Um, you, as you can probably see, you know, we won the best value out distributor. The one I'm most excited about is the best distributor training program. Two years ago, PAX 8 wasn't even on the page. Um, last year, we took the silver spot uh, behind Ingram, but we did jump in front of um, Tech Data and Cynix, you know, as they combined. And I really worked hard with the Pax8 Academy team. Like, hey guys, there is no reason we shouldn't be winning this thing. And we got the word out of what we're doing in Pax8 Academy and we took home the gold. So I am super excited about that. And, and if, you, if you look at it, Pax8 kind of swept all the distributor categories, even though we're working hard not to be uh, framed as a distributor, more uh, your cloud marketplace. But um, and just super excited. We, we kind of swept the categories except the two we don't do financing, right? Because we're monthly services as well as um, uh, the hardware stuff. So anyway, just super excited. Want to thank our readers and, uh, and listeners for voting for PAX 8. So I'd like to uh, take a second and uh, introduce Sky. So uh, I think we can bring Sky on. 
And I you know, wanted to welcome you to the show. Thank you for joining. And as we start with most of our guests, if you could take just a minute and do a little bit of a humble brag. <laughs> um, so I am a, a senior marketing manager with Pax8 and I've been here at Pax8 um, for a year and a half, um, but have had a longer career in marketing. Um, yeah, and I love working with your team, Rex, and the Academy folks. Yeah, well, you know, go ahead and bring us up to speed on some of the things you did before you got to Pax8. Sure. Um, so I started my career at TJX. They own TJ Maxx and Marshalls. Um, and so I uh, dabbled definitely in retail. Um, and then I got my MBA uh, at Boston College and then went on to work at GE, um, General Electric and um, was part of their experience commercial leadership program. So had um, different jobs within sales and marketing there. And then that's really where I found my passion for marketing um, and then stayed with what they called GE money at the time, um, doing some new product introductions and working with actually retailers um, on their credit card program. And then I also worked um, as a store manager for Lululemon a little later on in my career. Um, trying to stick with retail for a while um, while I was also raising my family. Um, and then in, in the closet, in, in, in my closet, there's a Lululemon bin that uh, if I'm putting the laundry away, I know the Lululemon logo goes in that bin. So yes. <laughs> must also be washed separately in our household. <laughs> um, yeah. And then sometime um, with Microsoft. Um, and then moved on and worked um, for a company um, that had a skincare line that they had just acquired. Um, and then kind of really enjoyed tech and wanted to kind of move back into the tech world. And that's where um, I came to GE or GE, Pax8 um, via Lindsay Hoffman, who now runs our social impact team. You know, I, it's been amazing for me, right, owning and running a small uh, services business, C-level. And I was working with a company called KLA to Henry Lee and Associates for our the marketing that we were doing with C-level. And I, you know, I was pretty happy with our marketing engine and, and the demand engine that we had and sort of the flywheel that we had running. And then the acquisition happened and I, I you know, we continued to run a little bit of that with KLA, but I really started working within the Pax8 marketing department, and mm -hmm. it it was a you know a bit of a shock, uh, you know, because the Pax8 marketing department was driving new partners to come to Pax8 and and working to get partners to buy more and more of the products in our solution stack, and and then I show up with this services thing, and it was kind of a challenge for me to um, work with the marketing department. They were eager to work with us and and learn how to bring a services offering to market within PAX 8. Uh, but I was definitely a bit foreign and um, I don't really know how PAX 8's talent development, uh, you know, talent acquisition group works, but I got word uh, not too far into it that uh, I was going to get a marketing uh, person who would help represent Academy within marketing. And I really didn't have any input into who they were going to um, do, you know, give us. And and all of a sudden, Sky, you showed up, and I wasn't really sure, you know, who you were, what you knew about the partner community, what you knew about the channel. Um, but I'll tell you, you dove in headfirst to try to figure out what the heck it is we were doing in Academy, and. You know, I couldn't be more pleased to have you, uh, you know, on our leadership team and and everything that you bring to to help align what we're doing in Academy with what uh, Pax Eight's doing from a overall marketing perspective. Um, can you tell the group just a little bit what it was like? You know, just sort of getting dropped into to this group and yeah, you know, what you found. Um yeah, I mean, first I'll say everyone was so welcoming um, and I appreciate how straightforward um, the whole group was about where Academy was when I walked in. Um, 
and then embracing me um, kind of through all the challenges as well. Um, I think what the big difference was, was that when sea level was acquired by PAX 8, sea level kind of stood on its own and so could really um, market just strictly as sea level. And once part of PAX 8, it's part of the PAX 8 ecosystem. So Academy becomes part of a larger conversation. Um, and so where are those places that we can make sure we're speaking about Academy? Um, but I think the first part I noticed was that there wasn't um, an overarching kind of value proposition for Academy. Academy was a lot of different things to a lot of different um, people within PAX 8. Um, and so depending on who you spoke to or which salesperson you spoke to, they kind of said different things. So, so Academy could be for someone, a peer group and someone else, it was coaching and someone else, it was free on demand content. Um, and so we had to take a step back there and talk about like, what is just Academy um, and creating that, that value prop and message. So um, we worked with KLA because they were so familiar with C-Level and the team. Um, and then we're able to really use that messaging um, across PAX 8. And so I think that was kind of the best, the best kind of first step. Um, but we also had to work with internal stakeholders too. So we wanted to make sure our partners understood Academy, but we really needed as a company to understand what Academy was. And so it was kind of a dual go to market. Um, go to market yeah, internal. I was really I was really excited as we I kind of leveraged the story brand concept. And I think a lot of our partners uh, should really look at that story brand, you know, concept. And uh, I don't know, can you introduce that, you know, just a super high level? Sure. Um, yeah. So story brand um, is kind of a structure to figuring out um, a company's value prop and how they want a message. Um, but it's really, they, first start by interviewing kind of everyone involved in um, a part of that part of the business. And so that's where we really leaned on KLA um, for that extra support. Um, and then coming up with, after all of those interviews, really what are the different types of messages? And then using our marketing team to, um, to get very precise um, around that wording and then using that everywhere. So whether it was on the website or emails or in a blog, we were always um, referring back to that, that messaging. Um, but yeah, yeah it's kind it, of a good way. I think it's really important to understand who the hero is and it's usually it's not the person selling something it's the it's the buyer right so um so yeah let's let's uh transition a little bit into segment four here but um so you're um in the employee resource group can you tell us a little bit about that sure um so i'm the communications chair um for our women's group um and that I probably started back in January. Um, and so we, PAX 8 kind of revisited, re I guess, our employee resource groups. Um, and so with that, um, I became the communications chair. And so it's just been a great way um, to support the women of PAX 8. Um, we're really focused on our relationship with um, a company called Women in Technology. Um, and then also supporting networking. And so those are two of our uh, goals for the year. Um, and then for myself, yeah, I get to kind of set up all the events and decide what, what we're kind of pushing and work with some great women um, across the company. Excellent, excellent. Um, so you come over and you start working with Academy. And mm -hmm. um, tell me what it was like to kind of drop into our leadership team meetings, our, our uh, and your quarterlies and, and our weekly L10s. Um, so I'd say one of the things I first noticed, um, and I repeat this often actually, Rex, is that if you have a seat at the table, um, your voice should be heard. Um, and I don't know that that's true um, in all, it really across back eight or many companies, um, but I was invited and I think what I was used to doing is sort of sitting back and processing a little bit and then seeing where I can step in um, and being a part of the leadership team with um, within Academy is much more about being involved in everything that's going on. So it's not just if um, something comes up about marketing, um, that's where I can lean in probably the most, but also just keeping track of what everyone's speaking about and knowing that my voice is important um, in all those conversations. And so that's probably the biggest piece I, I noticed. Um, 
I also appreciate, which I mentioned earlier, is just how direct um, the team is. So um, you guys start on time, end on time, know exactly what you're you want to discuss in a meeting. Um, not a minute is wasted. Um, and if someone starts to move off track, you will correct them very quickly. Um, and I appreciate and have gotten very comfortable kind of with that with that type of team you're you're using a lot of eos language uh, what was it weird when i said hey we want you to come to this meeting but here's a book i want you to read first yes yes <laughs> yes and and a website that that uh you have to use to kind of um put in what you want to be discussed in a meeting um but now it's yeah it becomes very natural and and to see it work um just how much um is covered within a meeting um we spend a day and a half as a leadership team and like everything is completed that that needs to be completed in that time and so um it's been a wonderful wonderful process there's um uh, the reason i'm kind of talking about that is marketing within a lot of our partners um you know if you were to ask our partner base you know how many of you have a ma marketing person and you're going to get a very very low percentage are going to raise their hand um and I'm talking about this because for me, you know, I've really learned to embrace marketing, casting that net, finding our, you know, our target client profile and getting the right message out to the right, the right people. And, you know, I just fully brought you right into everything that's going on within Academy because I wanted you to have that background and that understanding of what we're doing. And I just see like a lot of people have a marketing person, but they're not bringing them into their, their leadership meetings, you know, um, so I am super thankful that you are here with us uh, in these meetings, so. Thanks, Rex. Um, I think we should have Chris ask you about your quote. Oh, sure. Hey, Sky. Great to spend some time with you. Thank you so much for being here. And as you, you know, one of the things we always do each week is we introduce a quote. We talked about this and you brought a quote to us that just I'm still digesting. <laughs> so I'd love to ask if you wouldn't mind sharing your quote with those that are listening. Sure. And this is I'll pretty, have to say what I'm it, looking at right now is a little garbage. There we go. Yeah, it's yeah, there we go. There. And this is this is deep. There's a lot to it. So it's worth it I, I tell everybody it's worth the ride so yeah sky if you want to read this sure um our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure it is our light not our darkness that most frightens us we ask ourselves who am i to be brilliant gorgeous talented fabulous actually who are you not to be you are a child of god your playing small does not serve the world there is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. And that's from Marianne Williamson. That's, I think it's beautiful. And what I like about it, it took me a few minutes to kind of process it. That, and the more I read it, the more it hit me. And so mm -hmm. I just really appreciate you sharing that. Now, where did you come across that? How did you experience yeah. that, that it touched you? Um, I've known that quote for a while. And I think, um, gosh, it's probably been about 10 to 15 years ago, printed it out, kind of saw it for the first time, printed it um, and put it on my wall. Um, but since then, um, have had it made into like an officially framed picture, which my husband, um, sort of, I picked out as a gift to myself and my husband gave me, um, for Christmas a few years ago. And now it hangs officially, um, in my bedroom. And so I see it every morning and, and every night before bed. Um, but I think it's, there's something about the, the line where, um, like we're meant to shine like children do. And like, that's what I, that's what I see. Like children are fully themselves. Um, and then something happens as we get older, um, where we sort of shy away and we start to, um, 
kind of anticipate other people's thoughts and feelings about us. Um, and so it's a constant reminder to like show up every day. Um, this is what I was put here to do. And even if I'm nervous about um, how it might not go the way I thought based on prior experiences or someone might be upset about something that I can't anticipate, um, that I shouldn't let that fear get in the way. You know, I'll share what, what touched me was when, you know, who are we not to, to be, you know, beautiful and, and glorious. And, you know, I, that, that line is kind of almost like a, a challenge put out there that, that mm -hmm. line really kind of related to me. So I, I think that's, it's beautiful, very thought provoking. And I, I appreciate you sharing that because I think it's also very personal uh, part about you. And I, it's very encouraging to imagine you incorporating that into your life. So thank you. Yeah. Yes. Um, now, on that note, it's funny that how to me and I think about that in the balance between you know uh, humility and humble. And you are one of the most down to earth people I know, and I think something I want to bring up that I don't think we get quite enough uh, attention to is you have a background. Tell us a little bit about your education, and and I think there's some there's some pretty cool things that I'd love to have you share. <laughs> Um, sure. Well, I went to Providence College um, for undergrad. And then um, I guess kind of what happens when you go to Providence College is that the big rival is Boston College. Um, and so when I wanted to go get my MBA, um, I wanted Boston College. That was like sort of I won't say everyone at Providence College wanted to go to Boston College, but a lot of a lot of students did. Um, and so went to Boston College. And when you when you go to Boston College, um, the people there wanted to go to Harvard. Um, and so I started um, about two and a half years ago um, getting a graduate certificate at Harvard um, in marketing strategy. Um, and after my first course, which is I think where you're going with this, Chris, um, <laughs> My marketing professor asked me um, to become a teaching assistant at Harvard. And so um, I've supported um, a few classes there. And yeah, and so I, I'm a teaching assistant <laughs> See, at Harvard. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that is awesome. That's really amazing. Do we have, uh, well, I think we have an image. Do we have a, a Harvard um, graphic? I, oh, I love this picture. Yeah. Can, so tell us about this picture. Of, yeah. So that's in front of like the Harvard Gates. Um, and that's me in the yellow and then to either side of me are my four boys. And then my dad is kind of in the second row there. So we were, we went for a weekend and made sure we did the tour and everyone got Harvard gear and, um, yeah, it was a great, it was a great visit, but a lot of what I do is, is virtual. So. <laughs> nice well, but I, I just, I want to highlight that because I think that is quite an accomplishment. And I think it's something you should be very, very proud of. And I can want to call out, especially, and I don't want to take anything away from your segment with, with Bessie, but, you know, having you as a resource to lead an instructor-led course, I think is, is phenomenal. And I know I've, I've worked with you in, in peer groups, and I think you bring a tremendous amount of value. Um, and, and what you've shared within the peer groups, I think, has been really, really impactful. So thanks for sharing your education. And, and I just want to highlight your accomplishments. <laughs> Now, now we're kind of I'm going backwards a little bit and talking about I, I kind of speaking about college, you know, experience. But tell us a little bit about the Disney College program. Um, yeah. You did that a little while back. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I um, Disney was like the first place that I um, look at understood. that. Look, yeah. look at that. I gotta, I gotta just. All right, tell me about. Just this talk is about the, the picture for just a minute. Okay. This is, um, I was a park greeter at uh, Disney Studios. And so that's the turnstile. Um, and so I work, yeah, when you're going through the turnstiles, I'd work the entrance and then you kind of shift down and later on work the exit. Um, and so, yeah, that was me. And you have to dress like a movie usher, I think is the, is the vibe there. Um, fortunately, okay. you can't see my black box and black sneakers, but that was also part of the uniform. <laughs> But um, yeah, well, that was, was a great. What experience. was the program like? Yeah. Yeah. So they um, they break that program into kind of three areas. So you're working. Um, there's a level of like classes and education, 
and then living. And so you're, um, you're living with like five other, for me, women, um, all in the program as well. And so, and that was, um, it sounds so simple, but that was the first time I really understood like my boss has a boss who has a boss. Like, I just like loved corporate after that. I was like, it makes so much sense now. Um, my dad had done, he ran businesses. I like sort of should have known these things, but it wasn't until I was like there and saw it in action. Um, that sort of my love for corporate all started. Um, and so, and then Disney is just obviously a great place to, to learn. Um, and understand and to be at Disney World for the summer um, was just fantastic with a bunch of college kids. So um, yeah, fun and educational and and always a always a good um, starting point. It seems that everyone loves Disney and has great experiences there. So sounds I mean it sounds like an amazing experience. <laughs> you know, being exposed to that. Well, um, I also want to talk a little bit about you know a couple of things that I've had the opportunity. To, to get to know you better. One of the ways we've kind of connected is around kids. And mm -hmm. it's something I've always kind of enjoyed is having conversations about the challenges, <laughs> you know, the, the, the things that kids, you know, put us through and, and so on. And I think I feel fortunate to have kind of connected you about that. But tell us a little bit about your, your, your family. I know that that's something that's very important to you, if you don't mind uh, share. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so I mentioned I have this like mark this marketing career and corporate career, and um, but my my first two boys, I mentioned I have four boys, so the first two are twins. Um, and they're born early. Um, it was a rough pregnancy and a rough birth and rough for them um, those first few months. And I was the time was at GE, um, and there was no option to go part time. There was there was no flexibility. It was in office, um, full on. Kind of during the time where you didn't really speak much of your family um and so i made the choice to stay home with them um and took a step back um from my career and then went on to have two more lovely boys um and so it's been an amazing time um i'm really proud of the fact that i could take that time with them and come back um i love pax 8 for understanding that um, different people have different careers and it's not always um, kind of a straight through obvious, um, obvious steps. Um, but yeah, and then, yeah, they keep me busy I mean, <laughs> for sure. Right. So yeah. Right. If, if, if you don't mind, I kind of want to lean into that just a little bit and kind of talk about that. You know, it's amazing how becoming a parent changes a lot of things about you. There's things, decisions and things like, can you share, was that a, difficult decision to to take a step back from your your professional career or was it fairly easy once you had these boys and that's what you wanted to do what was that decision making process like yeah. for you to decide to do that i think on one level it was easy because i was going to take care of them there was just something like kind of fundamental of like they still needed a parent close by um and i wanted to be that parent um, I think the hard part came over the years of like not working and kind of like my own self confidence dropping um, and kind of like, will I ever, like, when will be the time and will I ever be able to kind of go back in the workforce? Am I missing out? Um, that was one of the big reasons I went um, and started with Harvard because I was like, did I miss something while I wasn't working? Um, and so I think that was kind of the harder part. Like, I was very clear I wanted to be with them and they needed they needed a parent um, with them and then and then the other two as well. Um, but yeah, I think the hard part was just sort of the internal angst of um, when's the right time to kind of step back in and will I be valued and did I miss out and, and things like that. No, that makes it makes a lot of sense. It, I think as parents, you do you sacrifice a lot. It mm -hmm. doesn't become just about you and their well being is, is so Paramount that becomes a driving force for your decisions, and it's a powerful thing. They don't warn you about that, by the way. Yeah. You, right? We talked about that. They don't. There's no playbook on that. Um, but coming back into the work, you said that that was kind of a, a bit of a challenge. What was the? What were some of the things that you overcame, and what were some of the things? I imagine there's probably some benefits. I have found frequently that sometimes my business life or leadership opportunities have been enhanced by, by, by experience as a parent. 
did you find that re-entering, you know, kind of getting back into your career in the workforce, was there a bit of a benefit on having that pause and establish who you were and what you'd learned as a parent? Um, were there some pluses to that as well, or was it all kind of a challenge to get back into the workforce in your professional life? Um, yeah, I. it's definitely been a benefit um, that I didn't kind of see until I started working, like getting back into it all. Um, but you learn balance, I mean, for sure, and boundaries. Like I, there are certain things, like I'm very efficient because I know I have limited time. Um, and like, this is my time to work, I'm going to work. Um, and this is my time with my kids and I'm focused on my kids. And so um, that has been, I think, a driving force of like getting work done and execution and um, making sure decisions are made when when we are spending time in meetings and things, um, because this is, I, this is what I came to do. Um, and so that's definitely been a benefit. And then just controlled chaos. Like there's just, there's a lot, I mean, working with a team is sort of similar to like, you're trying to get everyone ready and in the car and leave on time is sort of similar to like, we have a project okay. and who's going to do what and when are we going to do it by? And so there's sometimes like, like that being very comfortable in that and knowing kind of how to move people along and motivate. Yeah. Um, yeah without screaming. I, I can see this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just yeah. picturing so many similarities in parallels. So that's that's great. And and I love that you've also kind of balanced, you know, you you're very hardworking, you're very focused and dedicated, committed to what you do in the work, but there's such a fun side. And I think one of the things that I think is is great to hear is one of your little it's not even a secret, but you've got this you've got a hobby or passion that um around stickers. <laughs> Tell us, you. you've got and you've got quite a sticker collection. Tell us about <laughs> how did that even start and and how does it keep going? I mean, what is your you know tell us about your fascination with stickers? yeah, i um I mean, as a kid, I had a sticker book, and so um I loved collecting stickers and um, organizing them. Um, and so I've always kind of, yeah, so that's my my original sticker album. Mm -hmm. Uh, which I obviously still have. And then um, and these are some of the old school stickers and puffies kind of on the right there and some Lisa Frank on the left. Um, but yeah, and then it's just continued. Like I love um, decorating with stickers. I've gotten my kids into stickers, but I still subscribe to two different sticker collections. Um, so I get like monthly um, mailings of- Sticker stickers. of the month club, is this, that's a thing, oh, right? That's a real thing, yeah. huh? It's a real thing. See, who knew? Yeah. <laughs> when I, when I, I feel like I've enabled you. I know I've been a courier for you where I've had people, hey, are you going to see Sky? Would you give her these stickers? And it's like, I feel like I'm feeding into this. But it's I think it's a very cool hobby and interest that you have. So I think that's great. I appreciate you sharing that with us. Well, I really want to hear more. I'm going to kind of pass the torch over to Bessie and uh, let her ask you some questions. Sky, thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. Hi, Sky. So I'm just so glad to be here. This part of our of the show is going to be more focused on what are you working on with your, our partner facing um, resources. And the one that I'm excited to talk about is the marketing and branding strategy for MSPs course that you're working on right now. You know, up until now, you've just been helping me market the other courses that we're building currently with our coaching team and with our collaborate team. Um, and helping us to market those. But now you are in the instructor, you're in the subject matter expert seat here. So do you mind just telling us a little bit about this course that you're building? Yeah. Um, yeah, so this has been a lot of fun. So um, taking, again, what I've been teaching um, at Harvard and then everything I've learned at Pax8 about MSPs and kind of joining the two, um, and I've been supporting Chris with a marketing um, and sales peer group. And so a lot of what I'm hearing kind of come up there, being able to apply that into the course. Um, so it's it's so fun to be able to pull it together. Um, and so overall, like 
what we're going to discuss is like how to build a marketing strategy. I think that's the number one thing I've taken away from my interactions with our partners or MSPs is that there's um, a very quick jump to like, what is the thing that I can do to bring in these sales leads? So I'm going to post on LinkedIn three times a week or something. Um, but it's not, there isn't like a strategy behind all of that. And so it's really stepping back, developing the strategy, um, understanding the market. And so, and then where do you want to like play in that market? So like, here's, here's kind of where I'm at, whether it's geographically or um, what, we focus on as far as a business, um, but also like, is that where you is that where you want to have your customers? Like, where where are you going to go next? And so, really understanding your environment, but also understanding where you want to play within that environment. And then once that's decided, um, who who do you target and how? Um, and so we're really going to lay it all out. Um, there's going to be homework, <laughs> um, and but <laughs> the goal being at the end that. Um, MSPs have something solid to walk away and implement into their business. I'm glad you mentioned the homework because I think sometimes people think, oh, professional development courses, I can just sign in, I'll just listen in the background while I do my work. And our instructor led courses, most of them are, all of them are very engaging, but most of them have this homework element where you are going to ask to work on some things outside of class to prepare for the next class. So you get the most out of it by um, attending, of course, doing the homework and being prepared. So I'm really excited for, and they're fun, they're fun homework assignments too. They're not just, okay, now, well, let's write a research paper. <laughs> it's go in and, and find these um, specific tasks that are going to help you develop this overall strategy. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. Can you tell us a little bit about who do you think should take the course? Should it be anyone from an MSP? What kind, who do you think should be attending? Yeah, I think um, I think an MSP that um, is either new to marketing or wants like a refresh. Again, it's like it's going to be kind of step by step through that strategy. Um, so I I'm not going to talk over or talk through things like it's to learn all of it, but it's also whoever wants to like develop that strategy over time um, and really do the work. And so um, I think yeah, I think it's very inclusive um, and and kind of wherever someone is kind of in that journey, but also looking um, looking to figure out what's next for them in the marketing realm. Um, I also think that from the peer group, I learn a lot about, we talk a lot about sales and marketing kind of um, floats in the background there is something um, an MSP should do. Um, and so I think there's definitely, um, maybe an MSP that's doing really well on the sales side and sort of has that um, in their gut that they, they need to focus on marketing. Um, I think that would be an ideal, <laughs> an ideal purpose of participant. Uh, <laughs> definitely, right. Sales and marketing really goes together. Can you talk a little bit about that relationship just for, for folks that are not familiar um, with that yeah. relationship between sales and marketing? Excuse me. Yeah. Um, like I think of sales as like they're they're executing, they're um, one on one with their customers, um, and marketing is like in the background in the sense of like you might have someone you spoke with who might be interested in working with your business. They're just not ready for whatever reason. Uh, they have a contract mm -hmm. that hasn't um, finished up. Um, they just don't need the support right now. They're looking to hire and then they're ready. Um, and so marketing is really that reminder. Um, and so it leans on thought leadership. Um, it leans on like just keeping in touch, networking, um, referrals. Um, but it, it kind of keeps that conversation warm. Um, and so that you are top of mind when that customer is ready to be your customer. Yeah, that, that sounds so, it's so important to do that because I'm sure there's a lot of MSPs listening that maybe connect with that or have thought of that before. Um, and, and, and it really speaks to that, why it's so important to have a strategy. And, and I initially brought to you this course saying, oh, let's do a marketing and branding course. And you're like, well, let's do a marketing and branding strategy course. Uh, and you've already sort of mentioned that that's important to for every MSP to have that strategy piece of it. Can you share a, just a little bit more about why that's important and what happens if you don't have a strategy? What will happen? to 
you know, is what, 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 what's the case there? Yeah. Um, so I think it's important to have that strategy. So there's always something to come back to, like everyone is aligned, right. like this is where we're going. Um, and, and even like within PAX 8, like that's, we start with a marketing brief. And so it's very high level. Like, why are we doing this? What do we want to accomplish? Mm -hmm. What are the goals? Um, and we're not sitting there saying that like, there are going to be emails or there's going to be a blog or like, like we're not there yet. Um, it's really like, what are the goals of the business and how can marketing support, which is like why we're doing this. Um, some things around timing, like it's, it's very high level. Um, and so I think viewing kind of marketing from that lens of that it does support the business. Um, and these are the business goals and this is how marketing can align to that. And then from there saying, okay, this is, this is what we're going to do. This is our strategy. We understand what's next. And then we're going to try these tactics. Um, but I think even if that tactic doesn't work, then you can pull back and say, okay, we tested email and no one opens our emails, but strangely on LinkedIn, we had all these engagements. We said the same thing, right? So we know now that LinkedIn is where our customers are. And so I think you can play, but your strategy stays the same. And I, I think what happens when you don't have that strategy is you try email and you say, okay, no one opened our emails. And then you say like marketing doesn't work because you didn't have anything to kind of lean back on. Um, and right. so it's like, sometimes it is, it's testing. Um, sometimes it's testing the message. Um, but again, that strategy kind of is the alignment with the rest of the business and, and what you go back to, to kind of um, reassess and then, and try again. Ha yeah, having that plan in place and know, I really appreciate that. You know, what are our overall goals and how are we going to implement marketing strategies that support those goals? Um, and I, I think, so my, my next question is really around, there's often this conversation I'm hearing in peer groups from partners is, should I outsource my marketing efforts? Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts around that? Do you think that's something that should be developed in-house? Think it should be a combination? What are your thoughts around outsource marketing versus internal? Yeah, um, it's an interesting question. I I know from like a PAX 8 per perspective, we, we do a little of both. And so sometimes like you have a big push, um, like we had our big event beyond um, and we needed more support, but we know that's once a year. And so we would bring in some external marketing support. Um, but I think the, the, the true strategy still lives internally. Um, and mm. so we would want to make sure there's like an owner, I would, I would think internally, um, that really understands the connection between the business goals and what marketing's doing. I think it does make sense sometimes to bring in that that support. Um, so if you are going to lean into newsletters, um, then you maybe have support writing those newsletters. But I think there is still always a question of why are we writing this? Make sure that the voice is kind of what your business wants to be saying and how they want to say it. Um, I think there are things to make it kind of most personal um, that probably come from right. internal. It'll be easier for you to know and then work with maybe outside for those specific elements of it. That that makes a lot of sense. I think that's a really good a good advice and things to consider because I know with sales, often uh, MSPs are like, I don't want to do sales. I want to get it off my plate. Maybe something similar they think about marketing. So that's really important there to know, um, you know what some advice there from, from an expert <laughs> around what they should do with outsourcing versus not. Um, and then my other question of just kind of generally of having you've worked, we've worked with these peer groups now, you know, what are, what are you finding from working in this industry last year, year or so, uh, a little over, um, about what are, what are the top tips? What are the things that work best for MSPs? They're, they're, they're not doing business to customer. They're doing business to business marketing. What are, the, what are the advice you have? I mean, besides, of course, have a strategy. That's, I hope everyone got that. that's the number one advice. Um, any other top tips there for what someone should, uh, an MSP should consider um, when developing their marketing strategy? Um, gosh, this is a good one. So I think the alignment with sales is important. Um, mm. I think understanding where sales is focused um, mm. can some 
if if you don't, sometimes marketing saying one thing and sales is talking about something else. Um, and oh. so I think making sure you understand if your sales team has a quota, um, that if they're struggling or behind on calls, I think there needs to still be, even though marketing kind of, I say is like, I hate to say in the background again, but like in that kind of overall, like making sure um, sales always has someone to talk to. I think I also want to make sure an MSP doesn't forget that sales is really that um, face-to-face contact. And so if their goals um, are different, then it can seem kind of the messaging can seem misaligned um, because for the customer, they're hearing from both. Um, and so it should be kind of one voice. And so I think that would be my other my other tip. Yeah, making sure that voice is consistent between marketing and sales. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I'm, I really appreciate that. I think that's, that's a good, that's a really good piece of advice because we, as we asked, you know, how do they work together? It's important to know that they're all working towards the same goals and aligned. Um, I want to bring it back to the course. I know we've been talking a little bit about generally around marketing strategy for MSPs, but we do have this amazing course that is going to be started in uh, less than a month. So I want to share some of the slides from the course. And if you could just talk through a little bit about what we're seeing on the slides, give us a little sneak peek into what's going on in this course. Yeah. Um, So one of the things we're going to talk about is just what is marketing um, and kind of group discussion, but I think where where we will land um, is that while marketing definitions vary based on perspective, they generally refer to an engaging target market of customers to sell a product and maintain a relationship beyond the purchase. So I think it's like just very well said and kind of goes back to what we were talking about with sales, um, that it's, yeah, it's beyond the purchase and, and kind of everything else happening in there. So. Um, yeah, yeah. We'll I, know, I know there's another slide. slide. Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I love this slide. Can you just, uh, it's a fun little cartoon. Can you just explain like why you put it in there? I know we, we've been talking a little bit about this, but um, this is around like strategy development. And I think speaking to a little bit what you're talking about before, like, let's try this, let's try this. You know, can you speak to a little bit to it? Yeah, can you bring it up when it just, on my screen there we go yes um so yes i think this is sort of like what happens a little bit with like tactics um but ai and podcasts and influencers and social media um these are sort of all the things but shouldn't we talk about our strategy first and then it's like meh right like that's not the fun part um anyway this will also be right. here right <laughs> so i think this is what yeah kind of summarizes what we were talking about earlier yeah, exactly. It's a good image for it too. Um, uh, do you mind bringing up the next slide? Let's take a look. Yeah. So this, I like, I just love this because it shows kind of, it's all like in a loop, right? So there is the strategy form formation, um, but we will also kind of go through all of these steps. Um, so you can kind of see through marketing planning, programming, allocating budget, implementation, but then there is kind of like after you implement um, like, let's look in at the data, right? Like, what's the, let's analyze it and research it, monitor it, audit it, and then kind of go back, right? And say, like, does this fit with our strategy? Is it supporting our strategy? If not, kind of reassess again. And so um, I just love this feedback loop as a visual. Yeah, definitely. I, th- I think there's more, maybe one more. Oh, here we yeah. go. This is all the like marketing jargon. Um, and I think it's just important. <laughs> review it honestly like we can kind of go round and round and yeah. a lot of it a lot of these touch other ones and things like that but um kind of what we were talking about like what is that ecosystem and like where do you want to play and then like what are you going to kind of talk about how is this going to work with your products your place your promotion your um pricing and then like how are you going to acquire customers and how are you going to retain customers and ultimately it's about profit um, and so these are kind of the, the development steps we'll walk through. But again, you hear about the five C's, you hear about the four P's, things like that. We'll make sure, you know, everyone kind of understands them. And this is a deep dive into the five, the five C's there. Um, and some of the work that, um, so this will, this will has like a worksheet component to it, but, um, our MSPs will kind of walk through and make sure they understand the landscape for their business. 
Awesome. Yeah, I, I love that so much. I think it's going to be a great course. I, I do want to touch on really quickly on two topics that I think are really of interest to MSPs and I've heard a lot about. Do you mind, you know, talking about AI and social media? Should partners be engaging with these tools? Can you just a quick preview on those? I know they're talked about a lot. Do you mind sharing a bit about those topics? Yeah. Um, so AI is like, I think it makes marketing very easy nowadays. So um, <laughs> like anyone can I, do it now. <laughs> anyone can do it. Once you have a strategy. <laughs> yes, right. Exactly. If you know where you're going, then you put all those prompts in and then, yeah, it'll spit out something wonderful. And then you're just really editing. Yeah. And so I think some of the um, sort of overwhelming work of like, what am I going to say um, kind of goes out the window. And so I think that AI can be daunting. Is, yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah, I think, I think AI is this wonderful tool. Um, and then social media, I think it's, um, it's great. I think you have to figure out where your customers are, um, for PAX 8, mm -hmm. our customers are on LinkedIn. Um, and so that's really, that's where our focus is. Um, and so I think it's like, yeah, getting, um, very clear on where your customer is and then what, what, what do they engage with? So, um, maybe you are, I think like the thought leadership side, sharing kind of um, industry news, things like that are somewhat um, kind of low hanging fruit for an MSP mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, and wait and keep in touch. And then there's also just the one-on-one -on -one messaging within LinkedIn. So you can always kind of pop a message in there and speak directly um, to a customer that maybe you haven't heard from for a while, or you see something that they posted and you think you can support. And so I think LinkedIn is a, is a great tool um, for businesses. Yeah, definitely. And it's one that I know in other courses, we talk a lot about having LinkedIn too. So it's good that it's going to be talked about in this course as well, because I know uh, Jeremy Nelson's course, which is Selling to Your Perfect Client, he also talks about the power of LinkedIn, how you can use it to find referrals, um, people that know each other that can refer you um, is a great tool. And so, yeah, that'll be, that's, it's good for many reasons, it sounds like, um, both sales and marketing. So that, that'll be great to have. Um, and, and to use it. Yeah. Um, well, we're, we're getting close to wrapping up here. Um, so I, I know that, you know, we talked about what you've, the tips you've learned from um, the peer groups. Is there anything else you'd like to share about your experience working with the peer group, um, the sales and marketing peer group and, and anything else related to, to that? Yeah, I think, um, I think overall this isn't necessarily a tip, but just like I have thoroughly enjoyed like working with our customers and MSPs. And so um, they're just so smart, so engaged. Um, and I'm just like super excited about this course because it'll, it'll, it'll push me. Like I'm excited it's over four weeks. And so like I can come back and be like, I'm going to figure that out and then come back and help. And like, so I'm just excited like I'll probably learn as much as, as they do. Um, and so, yeah, from what I've seen from the peer groups and um, being involved with our partners, it's it's been great. And so I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited to kind of share what I know, but I'm also excited to support and just be a part of their learning and hear what types of strategies um, and kind of tactics they decide to use and, and keep in touch, hopefully, and see how it all goes. Yeah, definitely. And and I will say that if you're looking, you're hearing this course and you're like, I want to sign up for the marketing and branding strategy for MSPs course, you can do that. You can find it by going to our link in the YouTube channel. Um, you have to be a partner to take the course, but it's free and easy to become a PAX 8 partner. So you just have to sign up first. You could also go to our website, which is Academy. Oh, Pax8.com slash academy, and you'll see um, this course listed under the business category. So you'll definitely want to take advantage of that. Um, Sky, with our, our last minute here, do you mind just sharing um, any, is there any questions that you weren't asked today that you want to make sure to answer? Um, any, any last thing that you want to share with us? Um, yeah, I just thank you for having me. Really, this is a pleasure. You're all my favorite people, obviously, in Pax 8. And so to Aww. spend time with you and yes, <laughs> and have it uh, recorded has been, has been great. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you've been great. And thank you so much for joining us. It's, it's been a pleasure. We've loved having you. Um, and I would like now to say thank you and goodbye to Sky. And we're going to transition to our very last segment called Final Thoughts.
graphics there. <laughs> yeah, those new graphics are pretty cool. Um, no, I guess the final thoughts. I just want to thank Sky for coming on. Uh, she's been a tremendous asset within Academy, helping get the word out that we're here for partner enablement. We've got on-demand courses out there in, you know, I don't know, hundreds of them now nowadays. We've got the instructor-led courses. We've got the peer groups. We've got the, the one-on-one business coaching um, around finance and value creation planning and and security and all that kind of stuff. Um, the peer groups, Chris, are kicking butt. I'll, I'll let you kind of refresh everybody on, on what's going on with peer groups here real quick. But um, marketing is just something that I think our partners are not spending enough time, you know, really detailing out who is their perfect client? What does it look like? What messaging do we want to send out to them? And that messaging should not be, we have the best people, we have the best process, or we have the best technology, because that's the same message that everybody else is saying. Um, take take Sky's course, uh, make your marketing plan, and get out there and get it done. So, Chris, what do you think? I Well, one of the things that I, I kept caught my mind was, there's a little uh, video clip that we have when we're talking about kind of promoting Academy. And there's a soundbite over it where we say, we keep finding ways to help our partners. And talking to Sky, it just really hit that to me, you know, again, as we do. Uh, like you said, we've got the four pillars, we've got the different ways that we can help, but we keep coming up and, and having somebody like Sky with such, you know, experience, expertise, and to, such a willingness and a great attitude to, to help fitting in really well with the academy and finding ways oh what if we did this okay oh but then there's this content material this came up in a conversation in a peer group i've, I've seen her kind of interact with the peer groups and and just share some things that to her are just very natural and have the group go oh wait can you go back to that slide can you can you talk about that a little bit and that really you know and then we we find that and then we grab onto that and then we find ways to build on that and so i i just absolutely love um, what we continue to do. And I'll, I'll, I'll kind of hand over to Bessie to say, you know, like with the courses, what, what some of your final thoughts are. Well, number one, yeah, d agreed. Definitely take Sky's marketing and branding strategy for MSPs course. It's, you, know, you saw a sneak peek of it today. It's going to be amazing. There's, there's going to be a lot of engagement. You're going to learn a lot and you're going to leave with a strategy. You're going to leave with something ready to go. So if you've been putting this off and you've been saying, oh, I don't have time for this, this is your opportunity to take advantage and to make time for it because you'll have four hours of class time with Sky to develop that strategy and practice. So I would say definitely. And I'm you know, also, we're just so lucky to have Sky. I'm so glad that she was able to join the call today and that she's she's on our, our PAX 8 team and she's here, helps us with Academy, get, getting the word out to everyone. So we are just really grateful. And um, yeah, that, that's my final thought. So uh, without further ado, we'll just say uh, thank you so much for watching. It was great to have you on our show with Academy Live. Next week, we'll be talking with Rex um, on the four levers of gross margin. So you will not want to miss that one. Tune in on Tuesday at 2 p.m. Mountain. We're available. Uh, we're here every week live on YouTube and on demand always. So with that, I'll just pass it back to Rex for the last word. As always, think carefully about what you're doing with marketing in your practice and ask yourself, what are you going to do differently tomorrow? Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Like